Life is easy when you climb the mountain. And talk comes so easy when life's at its best. But it's down in the valley of trial and temptation. That's where faith is really put to the test. For the God of the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, He'll make the ground. When you're up on the mountain And talk comes so easy When life's at its best Now it's down in the valley Oh, trial and temptation That's so full it's really put to the test For the God of the mountain Is still God in the valley in spite of the weather that we are here. I like the faith that is displayed tonight because we're not going to allow the rain or anything to stop us because tonight is emancipation and we are set free from fear. We are set free from anything that would distract us from focusing on the presence of the Lord tonight. And so tonight we are going to continue to worship Almighty God as we continue to lift him up because emancipation is liberation Amen. is freedom from struggle freedom from political uh, all kind of stuff yeah. it's just freedom from everything the songwriter said freedom from all that saddens our life yeah. freedom yeah. from envy hatred and strife so many freedom tonight we're so free because the blood of jesus christ made freedom possible tonight Amen. hallelujah i'm gonna ask us to stand as we Continue to lift your praise to Almighty God. 
We praise, we praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We dance for freedom. Liberation time, liberation time, liberation time is here. warming up. We are going to sweetly sing this song. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Hallelujah. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know Oh, yeah. 
Jesus. At this time, we're going to do, I love him too much to fail him now. And I'm going to ask Sister Brown to open for us in prayer. Hallelujah. I love him too much to Lord, we say how prayer. much we love you. We love you so much, Lord. We can't, we can't fail you now. Yes. Right, we are here tonight, mm -hmm. Lord, yes, Lord, standing in your presence mm -hmm. on holy grounds. Yes. Yes. Because we know, Lord, wherever you are, it is holy. Yes. And Lord, we thank you that we can stand on your promises tonight. Your promises that will not fail. Your promises, Lord, that you have made. And Lord, as we come and we cast our cares upon you, we ask right now in a very special way that you will curfew this spot of God yes, in the name yes, of Jesus. Yes, we spring yes, to your blood tonight yes, all yes, over. Yes, Every corner tonight, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will just move from bench to bench. Lord, we pray that you will touch the fingers of the musicians. The prayer, Lord, we present everything to you on your altar tonight, Lord. We give ourselves to you wholly and solely to you. We lift you up, Lord, because we realize that there is no light unto you, neither in heaven nor on earth. And so we come to you tonight, Lord, and we call upon your names, Jehovah Shalom. Yes. We thank you, you are at peace tonight. Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides. Yes. Jehovah Rohai, yes. our shepherd. Jehovah Rapha, our healer in our sick room. Jehovah Nisi, our we ask for a covering tonight, Lord. Come along, come along, come along. We speak the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Because there is power all over the community tonight, Lord. May your Holy Spirit. 
spirit go forth, Lord. Discharge your angels, Lord. Every household, Lord, where the people are listening right now, Lord, we ask that you take full control, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Do the work yourself tonight, yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Because it's yeah. not about us tonight, Lord. Yes. It is all about you, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We come against every plan of the adversary. He would want, Lord, for us not to have yes. any service yes. tonight. But we thank you, Lord, that your people yes. have remained true on their own tonight. And we anticipate showers of blessing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We thank you, Lord, that you have showed up for us uh, these past uh, eight nights and tonight, uh, night number nine. Uh, we know, God, that you are going to show up in no uncertain way. And so, God, right now, I pray that you will arrest your daughter who will come to speak to us in a Hallelujah. short way from the yes. crown of her yes. head uh, to the sole of our feet. Lord, I pray that you will move uh, in no uncertain way upon your daughter we thank you lord we thank you lord we recognize that we are not wrestling against uh, flesh and blood uh, but against principalities uh, and powers rulers uh, in high places uh, but we thank you lord that you when we call upon the name of jesus uh, lord you can break uh, every fetter and set uh, your people free yes so we yes. ask lord tonight uh, that you will bring about deliverance uh, we ask god that you will save your people yes. we are operating under the theme jesus to the rescue yes. rescue tonight lord rescue tonight lord rescue the perishing tonight lord in the name of jesus rescue the perishing lord we pray lord that this altar when it is open later on Lord, that your people will just come forth. May preaching be easy tonight, Lord. May preaching be easy tonight, Lord. May your words find a lodging in the hearts of every hearer tonight, Lord. And may they respond accordingly. And so, Lord, we come in tonight's service. Everything that will be done, Lord, the songs that will be sung, everything we commit to you, Lord. And we thank you. We thank you for the outcome tonight, Lord. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of Jesus. Victory is ours tonight. Victory is ours. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus To every dark and each and start to rise Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I see Jesus. I see Jesus. 
tonight. He's worthy. Let us worship the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 May be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. As we look to his holy word tonight from the book of Isaiah. And before I do that, I just want to say welcome to each and every one who has braved the weather tonight to be in the presence of the Lord. How sweet it is for brethren to gather together in unity, in love, and in oneness. And to lift your praise to Almighty God. Because when we praise Him, we will get the blessing. We will get the deliverance. And so welcome each and every one. Welcome to God's ministering servant tonight. We give God thanks for her. She came early. I love her faith. Some persons would have stayed and said they can't make it because of the weather. But she's here tonight to break bread. And we're here to feast at the table. Let us bless the Lord. Let's say praise God, everybody. Hallelujah. Isaiah 59. And we read together from verse 1 to 10. After 3, we begin. 1, 2, 3. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. 
For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue have muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity, and speak lies. They conceived mischief, and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice eggs, and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out in a viper. Their web shall not become a garment, neither shall they cover themselves with their work. Their works are works of iniquity, and act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their going. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Therefore is judgment far from us, neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity for brightness, but we walk in darkness, ten and last. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday, as in night. We are in desolate places as dead men. And praise God, we give honor to God for his holy word, and we honor it by saying, thanks be to God. Thank God for reminding us tonight in this passage of scripture regarding the nature of sin. At this time, we will sing 430 from our hymnals, Glorious Freedom, Wonderful Freedom, When Jesus Broke, My Fetters in Twain, Worship in Song, 430. I'm going to ask the ushers to come at this time. If you take an offering, you can, the ushers will wait on you. I'm going to ask the ushers to come at this time. Once I was bound by sin's telling fetters, chained like a slave, I struggled in vain. But I received a glorious freedom when Jesus broke my fetters in twain.
to just bless the offering at this time. We have given an offering tonight, mighty God, for furtherance of your kingdom building here on earth. And tonight we pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless it, mighty God, Use it to your honor and to your glory. May those who have not to give tonight be blessed, mighty God, as you favor them with either a job or somebody just blessing them, mighty God. I pray for them tonight that they will receive so they too can make an offering. And for those of us who have to give, help us, Lord, to continue to want to give yes, more Lord. and more, mighty Hallelujah. God. Because the more yes, we Lord. give, mighty yes. God, yes, is the Jesus. more you give back, yes. press yes, down, shaken together, and yes, running over. Amen. Bless us as a family tonight, mighty God. Yes. Bless us as a people tonight, yes, mighty God. And cause, oh God, that this offering will be used to further your kingdom here on earth as we say thanks. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. I'm going to ask our dear pastor to come at this time and officially introduce our speaker, after which we will do just two choruses and then the choir will minister in song. Which one? You did not specify. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you happy to be in God's house tonight? Come on, let me give me a J. Come on, give me an E. Give me an S. Give me a U. Give me another S. When we put them together, what do we get? Jesus. Let me hear you shout, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. To the rescue. Hallelujah. We're very privileged tonight to have with us again, no stranger to us, I, as I said last evening, a daughter of the soil. And she is the pastor of the Burn Savannah Wesleyan Holiness Church, graduate of the Caribbean Wesleyan College, a mother, wife, and she wears so many hats. And as I said last evening, she may be short in stature, but a powerhouse in the hands of God. And so, in a short while, God's servant will come to us. And I know he's going to use her again as he did last evening. So, I present to you again, 
Reverend Nayoka Williams. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. All right, and this time we're going to stand. We're just going to do one chorus, after which the choir will be ministering to us and blessing our hearts tonight. Hallelujah. Can we stand in the presence of the Lord? Free, free, free. I am from sin set free. Muffet wants us to do it. It's raining all around me. I can feel it. It's a lot of rain. Why, oh Jesus, please take away until we are away.
wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? souls of man, counselor, comforter, keeper, spirit we long to embrace, you are the hope where our hearts have hope has been lost away. says let the redeem of the Lord say so yeah. hallelujah declare that you are redeemed tonight yeah. say I am redeemed yeah. hallelujah bless the Lord bless the Lord hallelujah. glory to God glory to God hallelujah happy emancipation day yeah. amen hallelujah. we thank God that we are not only emancipated as a country but we are emancipated as a people. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
as we prepare our hearts to hear what the Lord is saying to us to say to us tonight. Let's just, you know, just get our minds and our hearts ready. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. To worship you I live. To worship you I live. I live to worship you. Hallelujah. To worship you I live. To worship you I live. I live to worship you. Oh, we need 
salvation will come. Yes. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we destroy, oh God, everything that the enemy is operating through. Oh God, tonight, we destroy ignorance. We destroy and every gatekeeper, oh God, in the name of Jesus, must fly the gate for the King of Glory to come in, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we are declaring now that you be enthroned, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We are declaring liberty tonight. Father God, we are declaring liberty tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Liberate your people, oh God. Those who are bound in sin. Oh God, may you loose them tonight. In the name of Jesus. Those who are in their beds, oh God. Who do not know Christ, we pray. That you'll torment them tonight. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Bring conviction and help them, oh God. Give them no rest until they run to you and say like, oh God, the jailer, what must I do that I may have this eternal life? Father God, in the name of Jesus, salvation is offered tonight, oh God. Help that your people will receive that free gift in the name of Jesus. Move from bench to bench, Almighty God. We declare that those who are weak will declare that I am strong. Those who are tired in body, we declare that you are strong tonight. Hallelujah. And we declare, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that your people, oh God, will receive the word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, speak yourself, Almighty God. Hide me behind the cross, O oh God, and pour out your anointing. For we are declaring that your glory, the glory belongs to you. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in Pern Savannah tonight. In the name of he who died and rose again, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, our Sanctifier, our God, our Savior, and our Lord. He is Jesus Christ. And the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah and amen. amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. The word of the Lord is coming to us tonight. From Exodus chapter 6. We are going to be reading from verse 1 to verse 9. Exodus chapter 6. To verse 9. I'm reading from the new KJV version. It says. Then the Lord said to Moses. Now you shall see. What I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand. He will let, let them go. And with a strong hand. He will drive them out. Of his land. And God spoke to Moses. And said to him. I am the Lord. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, Lord, I was not known to them. I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land to their pilgrimage in which they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians kept keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Therefore, says to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. Listen to what the word of God says. I will rescue you from their bondage. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. And with great judgment. I will take you as my people. And I will be your God. Then 
and you shall know that I am the Lord your God who bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptian and I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I will give it to you as a heritage. I am the Lord. So Moses spoke thus to the children of Israel. But they did not heed Moses because of the anguish of spirit and cruel bondage. Tonight I want to share with you the God who delivers. My God. The God who delivers. The God who delivers. I am telling you tonight that the God that I serve, he delivers. Amen. I am telling you that the God that I serve tonight, he not only delivers, but he rescues. Yes. I am telling you that the God that I serve is an emancipator, is a redeemer, is a liberator. I am telling you because I have experienced it. I have experienced what it is to be delivered from sin. I can tell you my testimony as a young girl. I grew up in the community of Bok. I remember as a young lady going to a tent meeting um, at Quarry Bridge. I remember the speaker preaching about two shall be in the bed. But one shall be taken. And I am saying I did not understand what the preacher was saying. Because he said that two shall be in the bed and one shall be taken. I remember I was sleeping with my sister at the time. And she was sweetly said, serving her God. And I remember I could not sleep. From the word was preached, I could not sleep. Every night I would feel to make sure that she's on the bed. Every night I would make sure that I feel to make sure that I feel her foot. Because the speaker said, two shall be in the bed and one shall be taken. I was in utter torment. No peace. I, I did not have the peace that God gives. I remember I went to children's camp. And when I went to children's camp, they explained what, the, what, what Jesus did for me. And I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. And let me tell you, brethren, I had peace in my heart. I wanted Jesus to come because I knew that if he, he came the very moment I was ready Amen. I was ready Hallelujah. and so I can tell you that when it comes to the peace of almighty God I rejoice I am delivered I am set free I can tell you that if you are here without Christ you need Jesus Christ. Amen. You need him to deliver you from sin. Yes. 13 years old. Can I tell you that my mother went away when I was 12 years old. Better for a better. You know, um, people want better. Yes. She went away and she leave us with our father. My father died leaving us. I was wondering what as a young girl, how comes I gave my heart to the Lord? And after giving my heart to the Lord, God take my father who was taking care of us. Three of us, myself, my sister, and my small brother. And let me tell you something, brethren. I have seen God work it out for me. Yes. You see, I love the people of God. Because let me tell you something, brethren. When my father died and my mother did not return, the church of Bok was the holiness church. They took us up. Yes. Let me tell you, my mother's friend, she came off the hill and she said, pack your things. She said, pack your things, you are going up. And let me tell you, that woman of God treated us. Hey, I tell you, 
She was a mother. You see, you see, my past as wife, she was my second mother. She watched over us like a hawk. I am standing here because of the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. I am standing here declaring that as a young girl, if you have accepted Christ, you can make it. And I am declaring that Jesus is not only for all people. Jesus is for you. I can tell you what God has done for me. When I saw that I was at my worst, Jesus was preparing me for my best. I am delivered. I am set free because of the grace of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. And so the word of God to us tonight is that God, the God that we serve, he can deliver. He can deliver. Brethren, sometimes we find ourselves in position where our backs are against the wall. We are life situation hedge us up. And um, as some people would have said it, we are between the devil and the deep blue sea. Uh, we are, uh, we hit rock bottom. I don't know if you have ever experienced it. But that was where the children of Israel was. Yeah. Amen. They were in utter torment. They were in bondage. Yes. They live, sleep, and walk. Everything that they do, the Bible tells us that guess what? Fear intensified the burden. Yeah. And when he intensified the burden upon them, the Bible said they groan. They groan because they could not take the burden that was upon them. And the Bible said God heard the groaning of his people. Yes. Brethren, I am saying to you, sometimes life back us up in some corner that when you turn, there, was, there is nothing but the wall. But can I say to you, when you turn to the wall, look up. Look up, for if you look up, you will see the deliverer. I am talking to you about what happened to the children of Israel. They were in slavery. Utter bondage. Utter bondage. You see, in the society that we live, in the society that we live, sometimes life push us that way. It push us that way. When when you think about deliverance, you you think about being helped. Yeah. And so the dictionary defines deliverance as to be rescued from bondage and danger. Amen. So the children of Israel they need a rescuer. Amen. They need a deliverer. Yes. And let me say to you, if you find yourself backed up, you also need a deliverer. Amen. And someone to rescue you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. If you are here tonight, I am here to tell you that Jesus Christ can change your situation. Amen. You do not have to go home the same tonight. You do not have to go back to what you are coming from. Jesus Christ can change it. He can. He can. And so the passage before us tells us tonight, or it highlights a group of people. We call them the children of Israel who are in bondage, the Bible says, for 400 years. You, I want you to understand what I'm saying to you. They were in bondage for 400 years. 400 years. And the Bible tells us that they were under a hard taskmaster. Yeah. They entered the country in favor. But the wind of adversity began to blow. And Israel found themselves slaves to the Egyptians. Under the cruel taskmaster, they endure intense suffering and affliction. The Bible stated that in them and trouble, the people cried out to the Lord in Exodus.
Titus 2, 23 to 25. Let me read it for you, brethren. The Bible says, Now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage. Of the bondage that they were under. The Bible says they cried out and they cried, reach up to God because of the bondage. So God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel. Let me say to you, you don't have to say anything. So apparently the God that I serve, he understands the groanings. Amen. He understands the yeah. groanings. Yeah. He understands our cry. Yeah. Yes. And let me say to you, you see sometimes we see people we don't understand what they are going through. Can I say to us that there are many among us who are crying themselves to sleep. Yes. But I am here to tell you that God understands your groaning. It's not everything good to eat, good to talk. And there are some who are covering up what they are going through, but they are going through. Yeah. They are going through. And so I must say to you tonight that God cares about you. Amen. My first point to you tonight is that God cares about your frustration. He cares. He cares about what you are going through. He cares about your burden. Burdens are those things that troubles us or worries us or concerns us. They are problems. You see, when the burdens of life are overwhelming, I am asking you to give them to Jesus. Burdens. Let me tell you something about burden. You see, sometimes I, I have, I, I told you that I have the opportunity to counsel with the government for a particular time. And let me tell you about burden. There are some young people, there are some young people, probably your children, that they are going through, they don't tell you what they are going through. But they will come to us and they will tell us. And I am, you think I'm joking? They will walk out the street and come to us and tell us that this is what I am going through. Yeah. I am talking about burden. And when they open their mouth sometimes, you, you, you don't know what to say. Because they are carrying burdens. Let me tell you that sometimes the mothers are the ones that bring in the burden upon the children. You think I'm joking? The mother carrying the burden in the home upon the children. Let me tell you, you, you heard the, the, the story about Mr. Vegas' son. Yes. My God, my God. You see, he was carrying a burden. He was carrying a burden. The man sent his child to school. And, and this other young man molested the child. And not only did he molest, it is alleged. Not only did he molest the child, but he extorted he extort the child. That means every money the father gives to the child, he will take it. And the child have all of that bottle up inside. He is now going through mental. Hey, brethren, the child is now mentally ill. Because of what? Burden. Amen. Burden. Young people are burdened. Heavy burden. Oh, no. I have never seen it. Oh God, in all my years, so many young people are under the burden of the enemy. Amen. Let me tell you. I remember one evening I was watching and after I finished, um, somebody came to the gate and said, Pastor, I want you to come and pray for my girlfriend. But she's not doing well. Um, he was living with his mother. They were sweet Christians of the church. And I said to him, well, go and tell Sister Thornsa to meet me. Because I didn't want to go by myself. Amen. To meet me up there. And when I put on my clothes and I went there, 
the young lady, she was behaving pro provocatively, you know what I mean? And I said to the parent and the young man to leave the room. And we, 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 I said to the young lady, I said to her, when did you enter her? And she said to me, I enter her the very day that her brother molested her. You see, the young lady revealed to us that the young man, her brother, came from prison. And the very day he came from prison, he molested her. And she was hiding it. Let me tell you, young people, he that cover it is sin. You cannot prosper. You have to reveal it. She carried the burden. And guess what? She did not tell anybody for she was ashamed. She was ashamed. And guess what? Whatever was inside her was not revealing. You know what the spirit was saying? That spirit belongs to her. She belongs to him. So the, the very moment she took on somebody, she started to manifest. I am saying... I am saying that there are burdens. Burdens all around us. But I am telling you about a deliverer. I am telling you about a deliverer tonight. And I want you to feel my heart tonight. Because Jesus can deliver you from so many things. He can deliver you from the burden that you are carrying. He can deliver you from bondage. Bondage is bondage is something that people can put upon you. Not only can people put it upon you, but because of sin, it sin caused you to be in bondage. Let me tell you about bondage. Bondage is you trying to get out, but you can't get out. Because guess what? It's like something is holding you like a voice. The young lady, she is um, in a relationship with a gunman. And the young man went to prison. And no matter how many times the young man went to prison, she can't leave. Oh God, I am telling you about what young people are going through. She, he has his cronies watching the house. Watching her. She can't go anywhere. And he is in prison. He is not only in prison, but he puts her in prison. Yes. Let me tell you what the young people are doing. For you don't know. You know what it is that they wake up to? Rum and boom. Yes. Special. Rum and boom. Special. Every morning, rum and boom. And let me say to you, they are mixing it up now. They are putting in spikes. They call it Mali. And you see when they mix that up? Their head. They are crazy. If the, if the woman whom his or her mouth. No reason at all. No reason at all. Because they are under the enemy's bondage. Yes. Yes. I want you to understand bondage. Because you see, if you understand it, you will take Christianity different. Because you see, brethren, to release those um, young people from bondage, you have to have something supernatural. You cannot do Christianity as if Christianity is a style. You see, style, it doesn't work in this kingdom. You hear me? You need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit of God to release men and women from bondage. I want you to understand, brethren, that the devil he is very, oh God. The Bible declares that he is from and all that he has learned he's using it against our young people sometimes it's not that they don't want to come 
but the load yeah. is heavy. Mm. And sometimes they said to you, they say, I did drink a man make you no one come. They will say, Pass here, think I love me, love him. You know what that is that, that means? Fear. And I love she loves him enough, but she can do better. Fear. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. She can do better. For guess what? She, she every time she look, it's not her hopelessness. Yeah. And some because they want to preserve life. They don't stay under the bondage. But I can tell you that there is a liberator. Yes. There is a deliverer. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. And that is who I am telling you about tonight. You do not have to stay under your burden and your bondage. Jesus can deliver us. The Bible declares that God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob delivered the children of Israel with an outstretched arm. Yes. The Bible declares that Sarah started to get up because everything that the men of God did, they were able to do it. They didn't know about the God that we serve. And I tell you that the children of Israel, they were able to be delivered. They were able to be delivered. And so I say to you, God can deliver you from your frustration. God cares about you that he can also bring you freedom. Freedom. Let me tell you that God promised Israel that he will bring them out in verse 6. In, in Exodus 12, the Bible tells us that God gave them, oh God, the blueprint. The Bible declares that they were to kill a lamb and sprinkle the blood. For the Bible says when he sees the blood, he will pass over. So the Bible declared that it was a Passover. But I can say to you, you do not have to kill any lamb. For Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, He was slain for God and Calvary's cross for our sins. He has delivered us. And we can experience freedom. Freedom. Let me tell you about a woman in the Bible. The Bible called her the woman of Samaria. Oh God, she was a wretch. She was a prostitute. Nobody wanted to associate themselves with her. But the Bible said, my loving Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he had a meeting with that woman. For the Bible said, he had to go through Samaria. Jesus is passing this way. He's passing for you. He's passing for you. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, the stent is here for you. Amen. It is here for you because Jesus wants to free you. Yes. And the Bible said, when Jesus met her, he said, give me a drink. I love my Lord and say, give me a drink. She said, how is it that you need a drink and you don't have anything to put on um, to draw it with? Jesus said, if you know who is talking to you. If you ever know. You see that, that day. She experienced something. That no man could give her. Only Jesus Christ. For the Bible says she went away. She went away and she cried. Come see a man. Come see a man. This man is no ordinary man. A supernatural man. He said, Come and listen to what the word of God said. You see, the men in the community they said, I believe not because you said, but because we heard. Amen. Because they were able to see, oh God, the miracles of Almighty God. And I am saying, I don't care what you have done. You see, when it comes to Jesus, he can blot it out. Yeah, for he is a deliverer. Yes. You see, let me tell you what God did for Rahab. She was another prostitute. God destroyed a whole community for her. 
That means, you see, when she went to Israel, it is only the person who wrote the book of Joshua that could tell you that she was a prostitute. Because guess what? Not a man or a woman came out of that community to declare that she was a prostitute. God can do even more for you. You see that woman? She found herself in the family lineage of Jesus Christ. I love God. You know what that is saying? It doesn't matter who you are. Come. Come. Come to Jesus. He will deliver you. I am telling you tonight. Christianity might be hard, but it is the best way. It is the only way that the Bible declares that you will have eternal rewards. Come. Jesus is able to free you. He is able to deliver you. Listen to what Jesus Christ did for you. The Bible says he delivered you from your sins. He paid the price. He paid the price. But there was a price to be paid. And Jesus Christ paid it with his blood. You know, sometimes we think that we have to prick up ourselves and we have to fix up ourselves to come to Jesus. Who tell you that? The Bible says, it was while we were yet in sin that Jesus died for us. And so we have the excuse, Pastor, and already as yet, you know, for Pastor, you know, this and this, the put Listen to me, run for your life. Run for your life. There was this third sister. Every time you go to her, she narrated. For she, she's friend with a man who is not yet saved. And guess what now? Death came and took her. And when death came and took her, the ne very next week, the man found church. You understand? She was waiting for marriage. And death came and intercepted. And the very next week after she was buried, the man found God. And yet she was waiting. She was waiting. I am telling you, sometimes we do some foolishness. And I am telling you that your soul is important. Your soul is important. And yet we are playing with it. We are playing with our souls. But Jesus, he paid the price to deliver you. Jesus Christ can free you from your sin. He is also able to deliver you from slavery. You hear the word that I use? Slavery. Because let me tell you, that is what the devil puts upon us. Yes. Yes. He puts bondage upon us. And every time you try to get out, he will say to you, remember. 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 Say, you are so and so, you know. Remember what you do. You understand? He will always point you to what you have done. But you see, when it comes to Jesus, he will only point you to the future. The only person who remembers your sins are those who are around you. Jesus will forgive you your sins. He will wash them. As long as you give it to him. He's not concerned with what you have done. The only thing is that he's concerned that you come and you say to him, Jesus, I have sinned. And he says to you, don't worry, my child. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. He will deliver you from slavery. We can be a slave to sin. And we can be enslaved by our burdens. But Jesus has the power to deliver you. To deliver you. You see, it is a great change. Yes, since I was born. So let me tell you something about my life story again. You see, when my father died, we had two houses. My mother's house was in the front and my father's house was in the back. And you see, when my father died, we could do anything. But you know what would have keep us in check? The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. For guess what? Opportunity was there. 
But I tell you that she's, you know, every time I reflect upon it, I say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, for your, for, for, the, for the work that you have done in our hearts and for the people that you have provided to watch over us. Yes. Brethren, I am saying to you, look out for the young ones. Look out for them. Look out for the children. Look out for them. Bear your brother's burden. Yes. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. No, it's not the time for you to um just you know bite and chew and spit out others. No, love your brother. Bring them up. You hear what I'm saying? Watch over them. Guard the young people and protect them. If you don't see them wandering, you just leave them. They need guidance. Sometimes it's not in the home. And so you see when you see them come and you see them look at you, 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 you give them guidance. Yeah. I am who I am because of the people of God. You know, it's when it comes to my, my pastor's wife, Sister Hanton. She taught us as young people how to dress. You think I'm lying? See our dear Jenny's. Sister Hanton taught us how to dress. She said, listen to me, young girls. Protect your, don't give the young men anything to look on. That was who Sister Hart was. I remember her and I will always love her because of the fact that she took time out for us. She took time out for us. Jesus Christ can deliver you from slavery. If you are enslaved this evening, there is a deliverer. There is a deliverer. You know, there are some people who think that they can't come out from what they are under. If you talk to the men at the wrong bar, they tell yourself, hey, I don't think I can, I can make it in the past if I love my rum. They tell me. And let me say to you that, you see, Jesus Christ, I don't know how we do it, but he can save you that you have no desire. No desire. No desire for alcohol. No desire for the things of the world. Yes. Jesus can do it. Yes. And so we have no excuse. Don't put any excuse before Jesus Christ. He can do it. He can deliver you from slavery. He can deliver you out of sin. And he cares enough that he can free you from them. He cares about you. That he is looking forward. Looking out for your future. The Bible declares. That God was looking out for the children of Israel's future. It was not only to tear them out of bondage. Not was, it was not only to tear them out of slavery. But the Bible said. God said. I will give them a land. That is flowing with milk and honey. That means. God was going to set them up. He was going to set them up. So after he will have delivered them, he was going to position them now into something better. Yes. Let me say to you, you see when salvation comes, it's not final. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning of great things. For God is going to set you up. You see, what God does is he is able to make a nobody becomes somebody. Amen. You see, if you didn't have any purpose, he gives you purpose. Amen. You see, if you didn't have any integrity, he gives you integrity. Hallelujah. He makes you a somebody. Amen. And so, Jesus wants to take care of your future. He wants to. He wants to deliver you. He wants to free you. And then he wants to set you up. And let me say to you, brethren, the reason why I'm saying this is because sometimes, you know, you have your, your wife and there's something that you don't know that your wife have been there. Sometimes we have this the, the, the thing in, our, in us from when we were young and we have it like a cancer, like a, a poison and we are keeping it. Because guess what? If you release it, people is gonna they're gonna look on you a particular way. You understand? And you're lying down with the person you don't know. 
until guess what sickness starts to affect the body and you don't know where sickness comes in but it's because the person have this this thing like a, a like a ulcer and they are they fail to release it to cast it upon jesus but can i say to you jesus christ can deliver you from not only sin everything everything and so we don't give jesus some and we leave some you have to give him everything and you see if you want to experience the fullness of life that what jesus christ came to give us life abundantly do not keep it release it cast it upon jesus and you see if you want help find help know why so many people are in depression so many people psychologically you see some of the young people that walk up on the down on the road a life in a brethren yeah life yeah. life dish them a raw deal yes. you know sometimes a friend and friend you know make you know they, they they mix up something and they give it to the next one and the next one smoke it and guess what the head cannot contain it and then you know what happened the next thing that one start walk up and down yes. flip flip i there's a young man that i always see on the road every time we pass him i said to my husband daddy you know said that young man both that we go to school together you see if the class was to vote who but the, the one was will have more more opportunity to just succeed in life he would be the one you know what happened to him he finished high school and he didn't have the help to further himself. And he, he took it upon his head. And it flipped him. And he is now mental. And you see the man with all of the future. You see when we were in class. You see when I have problem with maths. Oh God. It's like, a, it's like nothing to him. But guess what? The devil robbed him. Robbed him. And so his purpose is aborted because what the devil step in and just just one little instant just look at help yeah. just look at help and because they refuse the family refused to help him he placed it on his head and now he's mental mental and so young people adults let me say to you your life is not finished you know why your life is only finished when you die because sometimes some things happen in life that kind of just, just change, take us out of alignment. You know how many young men I see life take out of alignment? It's on the news. The young man that chop up the next one is on the news. Just at the spur of the moment. He did something and then his life just... You understand? You understand? That majority of our young men... They are doing some things that just, oh God, so crazy. Yeah. Crazy. And so we need to protect our children. Yeah. And so let me tell your parents, I'm going to close. You don't come to church and you leave your children at home. You leave your grandchildren at home. Let me say to you, you don't leave your children to be watching tablet and watch phone. Not when. It's, it, 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 you hear the agenda of the EU? Yes. You, you heard it? Yes. They have an agenda for your life. Yes. You think of only public, Disney? It's the church. The, their agenda is to change everything when it comes to Christianity. Yeah. And when it comes to God. Yeah. And so, you see, when I see my son watching some things, I say, uh -uh, change it. Yes. Change it. Because guess what? They want to infiltrate their minds. And so I am saying to you, brethren, don't dress up and come and you leave your children at home. No! You are changing what was from the beginning. That's not how we were grown. I, I was grown to see children sleep on the bench. No! Bring your children because they need to hear. You know what the Bible says? Faith cometh by hearing. Yes. Hearing what? The word of God. Yes. How can they change their lives if they are not coming? No. If you come, your children should come. Amen. Amen. 
the only person who, who has the authority to say that you're not coming are those who are not under your roof. I am adamant that the church is going down because as parents and as grandparents we are not doing our part. And let me say to you, women and men of God, you are not praying in us. There was a time when, guess what? I could hear my, my aunt praying in the night, calling out my name. You don't hear those things again. Amen? We don't hear those. We, we, don't, we just come home and we're tired because that is how the, the devil calls us to be working and we're, the body just become tired. You think I don't know what I'm saying? You hear me talking about prayer? Sometimes you have to fight. Yes. Sometimes you take up the Bible. You sleep all on the Bible. But I am saying we must become strategic. And we must know what it is that we are all about. So prayer is important. It is. You see, if you want your children and grandchildren to be safe, don't play. It is prayer. A prayer changes things. God cannot do anything unless you pray. And so we need to pray to touch heaven so that there can be a change. Yes. Come on, brethren. Let's do our part. God is able to deliver us. Amen. For he is a deliverer. Yes. If he had done it for me, he can do it for you. Amen. He can. And children and young people, let me say to you, I will God save at age 13. And if God, through the Holy Spirit, had kept me so from then to now, he can do the very same thing. Yes. Am I saying that it's something, sometimes things don't happen? Of course. But that's why the blood of Jesus Christ is there. Yes. You, you, you understand what I'm saying, church? We apply the blood of Jesus and we move on. Yes. Well, you know, sometimes we go through things. You think it's for yourself? It's because somebody coming along. You can go to them and say, I have been through it. Yes. But I have overcome. Yes. Amen? So everything that happens in your life is not for you. It's for those who are coming behind. Yes. And so you, you, don't, you don't run from your past. Go on up to it. And tell them, I have been through it. Boka. Boka. Amen? Amen? And so sometimes people can't relate to us for we born baby Jesus. Amen? They can't relate to us because guess what? We are so holy. We have not been through anything. People must be able to feel you. Them young people must be able to feel you so that they can come to you. Amen? They can come to you because they say, you know, sister so and so, I don't, she, 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 she look real. You understand? You have to be real. You have to be real for young people. So, you know the whole sophistication don't work. Not in this kingdom. Not in this kingdom. We have to keep salvation real. Jesus Christ has saved us. He has emancipated us. And so we are free because of Jesus Christ. And we're standing because of what? Grace and mercy. Amen. Grace and mercy. Amen. And so we tell our young people, listen to me. I have been through, but yes. Jesus Christ had helped me. Amen? Amen. 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 And so, brethren, we must understand that the deliverance that God has is not only for sinners, it's for us too. Yes. But I am here to tell those who are not yet saved that Jesus Christ, my God, my God, my God, my God, he has delivered us. Our theme is Jesus to the rescue. The word of God declares that Jesus Christ has delivered us, rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of light. That's what Jesus wants to do for you tonight. The only thing that you need to do is to come to him. And say to him honestly, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I am a sinner, but I believe in the finished work of Calvary. What is the finished work? Your death, burial, and resurrection. And the Bible says, if you believe, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and if you believe in your heart, you shall be saved. Amen.
Amen. I hope that I was able to, 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 to give you heart to heart tonight. Amen. And that you are able to understand that Jesus Christ is a deliverer. The Bible declares that he delivered a, a nation. He's able to deliver a people. And so I say to you, those who are here, who are not yet saved, please, please, I am begging you, come to the Lord Jesus Christ. I am pleading with you, run for your life. Come to Jesus. Do not delay. For Jesus Christ is calling you tonight. Hallelujah. Come, come, come unto me. And I will give you, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. that you want Jesus Christ. Amen? That you want God to deliver you from your sins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to be praying for you tonight. But I am saying to you, salvation is just asking the Lord Jesus to come into your heart, to forgive you of your sins, to wash you. For you telling the Lord, Lord, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and that you rose again. And the Bible says if you confess all of that, you're going to leave the altar a changed person. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, we call upon you because you are the deliverer. Father God, we call upon you because you are the savior.
Hallelujah. We thank you for sending your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. To die and cover his cross for our sins. And so, Lord, we thank you for those who have stepped to the altar. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, as they step, we are asking you now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. To do, oh God, a miracle in their hearts. Yes, Lord. Father God, we pray that you'll wash them and cleanse them from their sins. That God, you will deliver them. Mm. That you will rescue them. Yes. Lord. That God, they will leave this altar experiencing mm. the peace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They will experience what it means to be delivered from bondage. Mm. To be delivered from burdens. To be delivered from slavery. To be free tonight. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Father God, we pray, oh God, that you'll do, oh God, a miracle in their lives. Do Lord. Through the Holy Spirit of God. That you will cleanse them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Help them, oh God, to go all the way with you. Yes. Not just to just come to the altar, mm -hmm. but to declare to the world that I am changed. That I am liberated, that I am delivered. And so, Father God, I pray that your blood covering will be over them. Oh God, as they make their decisions, that God, in the name of Jesus, you will protect them, oh God. And that God, in the name of Jesus, you will spur them and, oh God, you will help them to, oh God, go all the way with you. Father God, we pray that whatever fruit, Jesus oh God, that we would have achieved yes, and accomplished, that yes, it will Lord. not be lost, but it will, be, it will remain. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray, oh God, that you cover them. Oh God, that you snatch them out of the kingdom of darkness. Yes, Lord. And that you bring them into the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. Father God, I pray now in the name of Jesus. In the name that of you Jesus. will do the impossible for them. Right. So Father God, we can't do it, but you can. Yes. And so we trust you, Almighty God, mm. to do exceedingly and abundantly. And abundantly. To do above mm. all that we ask, imagine or think. Father God, we thank you. For the work of the Spirit of God in them. For your word says no man can come unless the Spirit, the Spirit of God draws, draws them. them. And so if your Spirit of draw them, the Spirit of God is able to transform them and to deliver them. And so Father God, we ask that you change them. That you do, O oh God, a complete work in their lives. But Father God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's all about you, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We rejoice in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Brother, invite Pastor to come at this time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You have walked to the altar once again. Some of you came before, and I am so excited. Even though some of you came before, you realize that 
anything you can get to make you, to stabilize you, you are coming back. Like this guy, he said, Lord, I'm not going to give up until you bless me. Jacob said, I'm going to hold on until I get the blessing. I want you to know, as the preacher said, God values you. He loves you with an everlasting love. And when you walk away from this altar tonight, you're going to have many questions from the enemy who, that you'll have to answer. For no devil is going to come that you are able to identify as devil. But you know what happened? He's going to use people who you will never think and so they are going to get to you. I am saying to you, God is able to keep you from falling. Therefore, exercise your faith in God. Unlike the members of the church and other Christian brethren to understand that these who have come, some of you, Know them as what you know them as. And maybe even some of you who are Christians are wondering, oh, what are we going to do with our day? Because you know who they are. But I tell you, it's not what you are going to do. It's what God has already done. And so, my brothers, my sisters, I want you to understand once again, that God love you everlastingly. And so before you go. I know you like to pray. But sometimes. Like the disciples. They think they are struggling. In pray. And so. They said to Jesus. Help us to pray. We hear you pray. Help us to pray. Because we want to pray. And Jesus said. I am going to help you. He said. I am going to pray this prayer and you are going to adopt this prayer and use it. Say it however you want to say it, but make acknowledgement. I'm going to ask you right now to bow your heads. Take a little minute and close out all the distraction. See if you can bring yourself right here. I'm going to help you to pray tonight. Simple prayer of faith. I want to help you. Whatever you are going to say, it's going to be your prayer. I'm only helping you to pray. Hear it now. Please pray with me after me. Dear God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I cannot save myself. But I know, Lord, that you can save me. For you have given your son Jesus Christ to save me from my sins. I now acknowledge my sins. I confess to you, Lord, that I have been doing wrong. I want you to save me and deliver me from every sin. I claim you tonight, Lord, for I have acknowledged that you said, if I confess my sins, you are faithful, you are just, and you will forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all, all things that I have done that is wrong. I accept your forgiveness now, Lord, and I commit myself to live for you. Keep me by your power. And help me to remain strong. In Jesus name. Amen. And finally. I tell you. That. We're going to have a special. Class. Which will help you. In your walk with God. We want to help you. We want you to know. That it may be challenging. But. 
you can face the challenge with God. As the preacher said, it wasn't easy for Israel, but they came out because they exercised faith, especially the leader, exercised faith, and they came through because God brought them through. I encourage you, I encourage you, my brother. I encourage you, my dear loved ones. I encourage you, church. I encourage you, Christian. Pray for these. Don't begin to condemn them yet. As a matter of fact, you are not Christ. You know what is on their outside. You see them behave certain way. They behave that way because of what is on the inside. The heart is deceitful and desperate, the wicked. And God, as the preacher said, can cleanse it and make them into new persons. So let's pray for them. And we're going to look forward tomorrow night to see you. Tomorrow night is going to be uh, different from tonight. We're going to have a film show. Which is going to speak to you. I have seen it. It's going to speak to you about resilient. It's going to speak to you about how God takes care of you under pressure. Come on, come on. And how you can overcome any pressure by the grace of God and your determination to overcome. So we look forward to you tomorrow evening. Please be here. The film is about one hour. And uh, you will be here. And we're going to make sure that you not only see the film, but that you are well cared for while you're watching the film. You understand? So Jesus healed people. Jesus gave them salvation. And Jesus gave them something else. All right. <laughs> so we look forward to see you tomorrow evening. God bless you and thank you. Uh, last night I said... For those of you who I'd like to encourage you for a 6.30, come out tomorrow evening. Those of you who desire to walk with the Lord. I know some of you are going back to, uh, going back to, to school for orientation and all the rest of it. But for those of you who are not going back, I look forward to see you tomorrow evening at 6.30 when you, Sister Brown and myself and uh, the... Um, counselors or altar workers will have you and we will inform you about something else last night i say to you that uh let me just say before i said that because when we when we have that done i'm going now i want to on your behalf and all of us behalf here express our thanks to rev williams we want to thank her for her commitment first to god and the fact that she has given herself to God and have given herself to the church of Jesus Christ. We want to say to you, ma'am, we have been privileged. As a matter of fact, I have been privileged. I hear you preach from distance. <laughs> but never sit under your ministry. And I am happy that God has brought you here. I wonder, I, I, I'm not sure it's your daughter with you. But yeah, if we, I'm glad you, you have a complete a competent mommy, right? And uh, I want to say for, for those from your church, from the Holiness Church and other churches who have come, I want to say thank you. Thanks to the musician. That's it. Thank you very much. Your commitment. Yes. Some of them are not here tonight, but that's okay. The, the, the Lord. Then the, 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 the gentleman who make everybody from foreign and outside of the tent see what is going on. Amen. And they have been commenting on what is going on. We want to say thank you, Fidel. You have really proven uh, to be faithful to the area that God has uh, entrusted to you. Thanks to everyone. Thanks to Sister Ophelia. You know, for leading the service and others who have led the service over the over the, the days, right? And we want to say thanks to those who have worked so hard getting this tent and all the rest of it. Uh, but the work is not yet finished because on uh, after tonight the benches they will need to go back 
after tomorrow night and the altar, the platform will need to be taken down. So the work is not finished. Right, my brother? Ain't no over yet. Right? So, and and men from the community and remember remember the baptism is not does not come as yet yes. and it is going to be yes. so praise the lord and can i hear someone pray do you believe that god has blessed people and have saved people then give a praise to almighty to god in this place so finally last night i've said the person who would take two but the person who would take the most people I have something for you. Where are you? Person who take the most people. Last night it was two, but tonight it's actually the most. Anybody take anybody who did not come before or who only come one time and not come again? The rain wash out the plan? Well, if the rain wash out the plan, the plan wash out so this me gone back one week. Huh? <laughs> All right. Um, Brother Alti did not come last night, and Brother Durban brought him tonight. So I'm going to give Brother Durban. <laughs> Only him alone. That's what. That's what I was told. He he's the only person. No, last night he never come. Uh -huh. Alright, finally. Anybody, only one time you can answer. And I am in charge. Anybody can tell me what is left in the bag. It is belong to you. A Bible. Boy. How you know? No part because it's not a Bible. <laughs> Anybody else? Water? You plow with my heifer. She said it. You plow with my heifer. Ah, uh, tell me. Didn't you plow with my heifer? You plow with my heifer. She tells the fact. She plow with my heifer. Did she hear when you say? Did she hear when you say? Uh -huh. Take it, take it. Shall we stand, please? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures. Praise Him above The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon all of us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up the light of His countenance upon us and grant us His peace both now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. And let us say thanks once again to Sister Williams. Put your hands together, please. God bless you. And I say...